What's up fam? My name is Joshua and welcome back to another video. And today we're going to be talking about what happens on the other side of gas or gear acquisition syndrome. And that is you have now acquired a bunch of gear. And what in the heck are you supposed to do with all this stuff? Um, a lot of this, what I've learned, came from using a DAW and all of that has to do with option overload. So one way that you can deal with option overload is designate one thing for one thing. Say, I'm going to only use this for base, or I'm only going to use my OPZ for sequencing. Uh, another take on that could be making a track with only one piece of gear, saying I'm gonna sample the heck out of my subharmonicon and get some drum sounds and get some synth sounds and build a track just that way. Uh, the third way, which I think is the most important way, is to kind of break everything apart and designate different systems, or if you have the room in your studio, different stations where you have autonomous music making groups of gear. So let's kind of dive into that and see what that would look like. So this is one of the stations that I've created. Um, I'm using the Korg NTS-1 as an effects processor. This old iPhone is running the Animoog app. The OPZ is for sequencing and clocking the NTS-1 and tonics and sequencing, of course, the, the Animoog app. Um, I use it for a little bit of drums. Primarily the drums are coming from the Teenage Engineering Pocket Operator Tonic. And vocal samples are coming from the Pocket Operator KO and Pocket, Op Pocket Operator Speak. Um, a little bit of lead sounds, pretty much just bass. Uh, most of the synthy type of sounds are coming from the Animoog app. And like I said, drums are over here on the tonic with a little bit of auxiliary on the OPZ. So I've kind of designated instruments to fulfill very specific roles. Even though the OPZ is fully capable on its own, there's a ton of apps that you can get for your phone. I've heard people make full tracks with just one pocket operator KO. And here is another system. The M8 headless running on a Raspberry Pi with touchscreen, and I have a numpad here to control the whole system. I could have used this alongside any of the other synthesizers that I have, but I kind of felt like it's a self-contained unit, and the other systems here are robust enough to not really need another sequencer, drum machine, sampler kind of workhorse. So this is its own self-contained unit, and it's a heck of a lot of fun to make music with the M8. If you haven't, you should. And here is another system. I've got the Moog Workstat here in the back, the Electron Digitone, and the ASM Hydrosynth. I normally use the Workstat for bass lines, the Digitone for drums. Sometimes I'll layer a bass sound in there, um, some keys. The Hydrosynth takes over all other synthesizer duties. Everything is then routed to Ableton, and I kind of go from there. So this is where gas comes back into play. You might have noticed that the subharmonicon here was not in any of those systems, though it very well could have been in any or all of them. And this Moog Workstat here is in the Digitone Hydrosynth station. So, what do I do when I take this away and I'm just left with a subharmonicon? Well, I'm going to be exploring modular synths again and upgrading, upgrading the workstat to the Moog Mavis simply because it fits very nicely alongside the subharmonicon in a 104 HP Eurorack case. Obviously, it's going to be centered around two Moog voices and one more or less drum sample. <laughs> so that's about it until next time fam peace